Mm-hmm. So Jaram, you are telling us about the Quaker Church. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So so yeah, there's, there's this denomination which, like I said, is predominantly uh, lawyers, uh, and then there's also, I think there's a section in the U.S. that is also uh, part of our denomination in mm-hmm. a big way, and so. Uh, so your yeah. parents, so that's what your, your so that's what my as parents, a, as a family, yeah, as a family school, that's yeah. a church we went to, and I remember even before I moved to Nairobi Pentecostal because of proximity, and also I guess it was a bit the youth church was a bit more vibrant mm-hmm. there. Uh, I had done the they have like some baptism classes at the Quaker Church and yeah. that kind of. I'd done all those classes because uh, yeah, my 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 parents were heavily involved in that church. Uh-huh. Uh, my dad was even the chairman of the construction of the, the or is it vice chairman of the building that you see there now. So mm-hmm. that's how involved they were on that side. Okay. But I think as now I was getting into my teenagehood, I started to spend more time in NPC Church Valley Road. So, so I guess that was the church influence. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Quakers are not very... They're not radical. They're they're very chilled out. <laughs> 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 Unless maybe you go back to to the Shags areas, mm. uh, but but it's quite big. So Friends Church Kamusinga is a Quaker, you know, mm. uh, built school, mm. um, and a lot of the education you actually find around Luya land is from the Quaker Church because that's where the missionaries first came in. I get it from the Quaker Church, and so that's where it spread. It's the same way. You find PCA is predominantly Cukes. Yes. Which one is it for Nini Kisses? You know, yeah. like there's <laughs> yep, different yep, missionaries yep. who started out in different places. So you find AIC is Kalenjin. Exactly. Yeah. So so because of that history, you find a lot of Quakers and Luyas. And so, but the only ones I know are probably the ones in Nairobi, in Shags, and there are some like in Indiana, in the US. Mm. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of my family history in whatever. Uh, later on, Kind of all of us drifted, including my parents, mm. uh, to different, but, yeah, to different, yeah, places, places. Yeah. Okay, but even before <laughs> yeah. we get there, so now you guys are talking about you and Kamau, yes. David. Yes. Uh, you guys now decide, okay, you with your five forty one or whatever marks it is that yes. you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. with your <laughs> passes, yeah, <laughs> you go to Nairobi school, yes. So you're you're accepted. I mean, you make it. You 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 do the cut. Yes. Uh-huh. So yeah. So what was that like now? And when and what year is this that now you go to Nairobi school? Yes. Yeah, so it's uh, so we went to Nairobi school in 1994. Um, I mean, both of us grew up in Nairobi, so so going to Nairobi school was uh, was kind of good because you're not so far from family. Because I remember maybe a lot of our compatriots from primary school would be flung all over the country. So mm. some would go to national schools, others would be thrown to shag schools and the like. Yeah. Uh, but for us, it was, you know, the pro- proximity was near Nairobi school is not so far. And so, hey, Nairobi school. Now you go to boarding. <laughs> before, before this, you've not been in boarding boarding, yeah. At least uh-huh. David had done it. I had never. So, mm. so for me, it was a completely new experience. Um, I did have some friends from church who are in Nairobi school, like David Kuria. Mm. And uh, and and a few others who maybe would you know uh, come to NPC Church, uh, but yeah, um, I remember that Nairobi School just I think opened up a completely new chapter of my life. Mm. Um, um, in fact, I even remember the first night <laughs> 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 because because we were waking up with this bell. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of those stories of uh, how. You know, by the time your parents are leaving, you're standing there with a prefect. <laughs> he's even holding your box. Yeah. And your parent gets into the car like this and leaves. The story that begins after that <laughs> is a different is one. life altogether. <laughs> Foolish rumble. What do you think? Who do you think you are? Carry this box. Carry, carry, yeah. Carry this, whatever. Uh, so, so, I mean, in fact, I think I have to be very careful about how I talk about Nairobi school here because... <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, man. <laughs> because we, I mean, we laugh at the experience we went through, but in terms of when I hear people talk about trauma, trauma yep. today, uh-huh. it's it's really what we went through there. Yep. Uh, because Nairobi School had a military tradition, mm. uh, and when you look at the history of Nairobi School, the school was set up because most of the kids who went there were kids of. Um, people who are like army generals in the British army who came to Kenya mm. uh, during the colonial times. Mm. So you'd find a lot of the kids who went through that were kids of 
uh, the, the, the army. And so naturally it ended up having a military tradition because of the influence of the parents of the kids who went through it. Whoa. So Nairobi school has a very long tradition from 1923. I think that's why it was at Nairobi primary, then moved to Wayakiwe. Mm. Um, Nairobi school had a shooting range. A shooting Even range. well into maybe just before us guys joined. Uh, it had a shooting range, like shooting club was a, a thing. thing the students used to do. Yeah. That's how much the military tradition was there. So, yeah, so we walked into that military tradition. <laughs> uh, so you're talking about monolization. Monolization was normal. Yeah. And that's why I was like, we laugh about it today. I, yeah. I do know there are some people who are like traumatized going through yeah. that experience. But those of us who survived were just like hardened through it and we laugh about it today mm. like it's it was part of our lives. What what is so, so me I never went through monolization because yeah. I, I transitioned out of the country yeah. at that time. So what was monolization? Um so I, I think the like the way the, the school system was set up was that oh, we had how was teachers. Your experience? Uh -huh. Yeah, so we had teachers, then we had prefects, and then we had the rest of the students. Mm -hmm. And the way the school is set up is that now we are in different houses. So uh, so there was a house system. Nairobi school had like eight houses when I was there. Uh, there was down school and up school houses. It, there was, the school is huge, 250 mm. something acres. Mm. Um, and so, so you'd find that every house has like from a head of house who's a prefect, a form four student, mm -hmm. deputy head of house, then there's uh, different prefects with different responsibilities. And then you have some form three prefects. Uh -huh. That system ran the students. We did not, we had house masters, but they rarely did anything. Mm. So the students did everything. And the students would manage the house and then they would also manage the classes during preps. Like so when you say manage the house, there. like give me an example, like cleaning. No, like yeah. they administrate in terms of they, they, they allocate duties. What? Yeah. They allocate duties to the students. They oversee, making sure the cleaning, the managing is happening. They oversee the dining hall in terms of how people are eating and all sorts of things. So it was really student run. Whoa. Yeah. And that's a system that really worked for the teachers. <laughs> that was a secret then that the teachers didn't realize that by killing, they killed that system later on. But that was now transferring work back to the, the, teachers, the teachers and, yes. and, and the workers. Nowadays, I hear students don't work. It's the workers that cut the bushes and everything. At that point, it's we, the students, who did everything. And we were administrated. Hold oh, on. You know. So even when I tell you, <laughs> I remember the first night, uh -huh. I remember the bell ringing. And the first thing you hear is jump out of bed because <laughs> you're there in Deckers. <laughs> and so you have to, when you hear jump out of bed, you have to jump out of bed. You don't at your take time. Get yeah, yeah. You jump out, you make your bed, you make your locker. And there's a guy standing there. There's now there's a form three prefects who are called monitors. They're the ones who now oversee, make sure. So you've, you've made your bed, you've made your locker and you know the way military have to fold yes, their the, the, shirts, yeah. their trousers, and everything. That, the you ha your <laughs> your staff had to look that straight. Uh, when the monitor was coming around checking the beds, your bed had to be straight, mm. like mm. complete military. Your shoes had to be shined until they were shining completely. Mm. Your in form one and two, we used to wear shorts. Yeah, your socks would have to be up, so you'd have to wear gutters to hold them up, like. You had to be smart all the time. Weekends, we used to wear trousers and blazers. Your shirt has to be tucked in, your you know, tie has to be straight. Like so smartness is a thing and it's very rare you'll find an aerobic school. Gag, it's been guy, instilled in the, you, even later, like looking ramshackle shabby, in, shabby. Shabby <laughs> in how they are dressed. Yeah. So like neatness was a thing and we would have we would have uh, what was it like like assemblies in the morning next to your bed so they check your socks they check your locker they check your bed they check how you're dressed that you're in clean clothes and you know uh smart so what before happens before you go to okay, class let's say let's say you you're, you're not what oh, no, you get punished by the prefect well, when you well, yeah, now what and is now punishments would be you'd do things like uh, we had these things called verticals where you put your legs on top of like a ledge and you do press ups or like there was all sorts were of you beaten? crazy things. So yes, beating was there. So <laughs> beating would, was there. Like slap you. So like, yeah, 
if you pushed it a bit too much, like in terms of, uh, we used to call it locking, like if you refuse to do what like the seniors were telling you to do, then you, you would get a beating. Oh <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and this would never make it like teachers would never get to hear about this. And like it was just contained amongst the student population. It was normal. Like we just accepted that that's you know that's how the system runs. So the same thing would happen in class in prep. A class is making noise and say the head of school comes. Yeah. Like you will all be punished. We used to call it chewing out there in the we used to have like grass patches outside our classes where you'd now all go. Sometimes you remove your whatevers. If, if what you whatever's. do something wrong, if you like, like those all forms of like, like if you watch military punishment. Yes, this is what was going down. All those things used to filter back okay. to what mm. it is that we used to go through. Mm. So you'd find that you were always at one point doing one of those exercises or, or, you know, like, what was it called? Like, like you'd follow doing chura hops mm, mm, you'd follow mm. a prefect doing chura hops from down school to up school which was almost a kilometer and the teachers you know. are uh, teachers are in their houses doing their own thing things, <laughs> you know things are running in the school so 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 the 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 the, the prefects would keep law and order at the time so i'm trying to understand this your dorms weren't washed by workers no 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 everything even cutting grass Toilets, none of this cleaning, was cleaning none toilets, of this was done by outside cleaning toilets cleaning showers outside was, people no it was students it was us as students who used to do it so every year you'd or every time you'd have like a responsibility mm -hmm. uh the most unpleasant like washing toilets would go to the most uh you know yeah uh uncooperative students mm -hmm. so it was almost like a punishment to be given that mm. throughout the prefects were like mini then there was a system where prefects had students who worked for them mm. and if you're a student who worked for a prefect it was called uh, tea trader yeah, so prefects would have someone who would uh, they had food from the uh, like tea and bread that would come after preps mm. so the person would go and collect it and bring it to them was called a tea trader that tea trader would be exempted from all the work so it was kind of like a privilege <laughs> so i was one later on in form one and yeah. yeah like down the year and there was also kind of a tradition that people selected to be tea traders would grow up to become prefects mm. later on did you become so a prefect? you kind of go through like a privilege system yeah, yeah. did you become a prefect yes i did uh. <laughs> in, for, in form four yeah um yeah so there was that uh, the the whole tea trader i mean it was yeah there was, so there was just a very regimented system mm. in, in how the school ran. We all had to do sports, so we all had to play rugby, had to play hockey. Every term had its own sport and we all had to play it. Um, I was telling you earlier that if you did something wrong and a prefect caught you, they would tell you to come in games kits after prep. Then they would give you a punishment of something that you'd do. Mm. So those stories you'd hear of people swimming in grass, mm. you know, singing, in the cupboard and all those sorts of things would happen now after preps mm. um yeah that was kind of a system okay so so yeah you so, so go this through must have shock. Been, it must have yeah it must have been culture shock for you, you go through culture shock maybe term one then as you go ahead and when you hear from the second and third formers that that's how the system kind of is so it was kind of like those who survived term one and term two would stay along but there are some who drop out because either they couldn't take you know the trauma or the system mm. uh and you know the rest of us who stayed went all the way to form four okay yeah i get it <laughs> it's 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 like uh, a different version of circumcision to, yes. to, 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 yeah to like a right of passage. yes actually a right of yeah. passage yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what it is yeah yeah hey, okay so okay so tell me a little bit then about your time in 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 this in, space in patch, yeah, yeah. In patch. um I think again I have very fond memories and mm -hmm. uh, you know people who hang around Pacherians always wonder why one we tend to have a very strong bond to a very huge sense of pride in in, in that experience mm -hmm. I think just that common experience of going you know through those hardships together and then later on you become the seniors and kind of propagate the same mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. you know to the people who come after you uh, but there was something that once you entered Nairobi school it was always drummed into you that you're special you're different and it was a different kind of different. It was not like the alliance type of different. <laughs> <laughs> no, the alliance are known as the bright choppies. Yeah. We didn't take pride in being uh, intelligent. We took pride in still doing well because our school would still be like top 20 mm -hmm. uh, in, in the final exam. But in Nairobi school, uh, we took a lot of pride in sports. Yes. So rugby, 
Um, we were very proud about rugby. We took a lot of pride in extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. uh, it was drummed into you that if you're a Pacherian and you go to a girls' school, you have to be, you know, we had this thing called Pice, which was like, <laughs> Pice, you know, it's been a like minute since you, I had that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you if had you to, know, you know. <laughs> you, yeah. So you had to present yourself <laughs> like you're a gentle. We used to, in fact, that was it. We used to call us. So away from all the monolization, the bullying and stuff, we yeah. had to present ourselves as gentlemen mm. to the outside world. Mm. And so by the time you're going, we would even find that when we're going for funkies and stuff, which is, you know, going for, say, drama or meeting, even something like Christian Union, mm. you'd have to be, you'd even borrow a blazer so that you're smart. Cream de la cream. Yeah, like you, you have to look Up good when top. you go out. Yeah. And it's enforced. Uh, but I remember... Cause Were I you in, in any of this drama? Yeah, yeah, so I was in drama club, I was in the choir at some point, I was in the school band at some point. Mm. I did everything. I, mm. you know, played all sports, but not whatever. I was in the swimming team. I literally did everything. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I remember going for these things. And we also had a brand out there. So people... Of course, we had rivalries as well. Mm -hmm, changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> changes. <laughs> yeah. Lenana. <laughs> so we had rivalries with other schools out there, which... Rugby. You and Lenana for rugby. Yes, Lenana for rugby yeah. and also Saints. Um, um, when it came to drama, there was, you know, I think like everything had its own rival. When it came to school band, it was Tarehe and uh, mm. I think Dago. So, so we used to take everything seriously because when you're out there, you're told... You'd even be told by the time you're entering the bus to go somewhere for a function that when you go out there, we want you to uphold the name of Nairobi School. So we don't want to see you breathing. We don't want to see you <laughs> standing in the corner alone. You must be talking to chicks and you need to impress them. <laughs> so, so that thing of excelling was always pushed yeah. in us. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and, and I've heard this from a lot of Pacherians, the system drilled into us being multitaskers. There would never be a time you find a Pacherian just doing one thing, just focused on academics mm. or just focused on rugby. It was like across the board. So you'd have to pass in your academics, but you'd also have to excel in whatever extracurricular thing that you picked. And then it just became like, so I noticed like my transition from high school to university was almost seamless because we started doing things like translating. I started taking a lot of coffee in high school because we would just, like your education is in your hands. So it's it's you to take the time to study, even mm. if it means all night to make sure you pass. Because mm. maybe, you know, in school you are going for a funky or, or drama or whatever it is the yep. next day. And it's really up to you. So we we're given a lot of freedom because like I said, it's students who used to administrate everything. Mm. So by the time you're getting to like form three and form four, you're quite independent. Why, why you, in how why you, you excelling yourself. them? Because you see that freedom, there's the, the thing about freedom, yeah. given to the wrong person, yes. can be costly. Can be costly, yeah. I freedom <laughs> In fact, when I look at my years, I'm like, the problem is this, the speed at which I got, the time at which I got freedom. Yeah. So for you, do you feel like, yeah, um, First of all, are you doing well in the books? Yeah. So I, th I think I think I maintained a good discipline all through, mm -hmm. and and really it could have been all the compression of just all the things you did. Because in patch, from the time you wake up at six to the time you sleep, say at ten or eleven p.m., mm -hmm. there is no gap. You start, you go, you do cleaning, you finish, you come back for inspection, you finish, you go for breakfast, you finish, you go for preps. Mm -hmm. Like everything was there was no gap. By the time you're finishing class at say three forty. You go back, sports. change into games kits, go for sports or go for clubs on Thursdays. And this has all been uh, student-led? All student-led. All student-led. There would be maybe teachers who are patrons, but it's students who more or less led everything. Yeah. So the higher classes you get into, you become a leader of those particular clubs and whatever it is. You you just learn leadership out of the blues. Let, let me but ask you. But there was never a gap. You finish at, say, 5.30, uh, games or 6, go back, shower, uh, change, go for dinner, uh, then go for night preps, finish night preps, come back for inspection. Like, there was never a gap in the time that we would whatever. So even skiving school, maybe on weekends there are some people who'd manage to do it, but it was so difficult because mm. there was always inspections mm. uh, keeping us on toes. Uh, just you, uh, if, if you've got an opinion, you can give it. If not, it's our. Mm. What do you think then is the problem with like for example what's been happening recently with a lot of high schools burning yeah, yeah. Uh, why why wasn't that the case during your years <coughs> what, what do you think 
Yeah, first, I'd, I don't even think you would have thought about it because the fear we had towards those senior prefects was out of this world. In fact, I can give a very famous story. Uh, when we were in Form 2, we got a new principal. And so he came and he tried to ban rugby because I think there are some rugby students who went somewhere and did something. Mm. So when they came back, he said, there's going to be no more rugby in Nairobi school. Hey, there was a revolt. There was a strike like immediately. And so the teachers tried to stop it and then they failed. And then he called the head of school <laughs> and said, you know, can you do something about the, this? The head boy, like the, the head, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was not a head boy. Yeah, he was like a head, head of school. Of school. <laughs> like, that was the that official sounds like term. a teacher. <laughs> it was head of school, head of house, deputy head of yes. house. We didn't have At the head boy. No, head boy, house captain. Yes, no, we didn't anymore. have those terms. Yeah. Yeah, and we are very strict about them. So the head of school used to wear a red tie. Heads of houses used to wear blue ties. Yeah. We had those, whatever. So he said, you know, give me a few minutes. All the head of school had to do was walk down and all the students went back to class. So that's the day the <laughs> principal realized that the head of school was more powerful than he was. <laughs> and from that time, they started dismantling that system. But I think it was to the detriment because the students used to really keep a check on uh, that. Those pre the prefects used to keep things running yeah. without the teachers and who, having who to get would decide involved. who is the head of school. So there used to be a selection process. There mm -hmm. used to be a selection process. Sometimes I'd look at academics, I'd look at sports mm -hmm. involvement, and the uh, kind of yeah. command and respect that people held. So I mean, we as form ones and twos, we used to see those guys like gods. Like you'd never, you'd never see a prefect coming down, say the, the same, whatever you are in, and you walk into him. You'd run in the opposite direction. Because you know that if he calls you or, you know. It's over. The, yeah. the, the day is over. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it was just a, a different, very different type so of system. What so I think it uh -huh. maintained discipline. I get it. There were a few cases where maybe it went overboard. Yeah. I don't remember. There were no deaths or like mm -hmm. people being burnt and stuff. But maybe there were a few cases where you'd find a student maybe ends up in the sanatorium because they were beaten or something. Mm. There were a few cases of that. Uh, but even the message that was sent to the rest of us is, you know, don't cross the line. So we were quite mm. like i say um, i mean the only thing i can i can i can equate it to is the military yeah because the other funny thing is that people who went to the military from from our school didn't find a big difference <laughs> <laughs> between what they left behind and what they found on the no, other if side they came from my school <laughs> <they'd struggle. laughs> yeah. so, so do you feel like then 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 let's i'm um, like uh, back to that question so mm. what do you think and maybe you don't have an, an answer to yeah, it, but why, yeah. why, what was this revolt? I, th I think it just made us very dif disciplined. Okay. I okay. think it just made us very disciplined at the time. Because like I was saying, you'd never even think of doing something it's not wrong. Even and an you option. just accepted that that was a system. So you just fall in line with the system. You do your thing. Uh, it helps you go through. Um, I did pretty well, I think, all the way through. Okay. I think I was top three in my school in the final exam. Top three yes. in the school? Yes. Okay, let me ask you this other question. I was index... Yeah, I was index three and I was also top three in the final exam. Bro. Yeah. So you're a girl of A, yeah? <laughs> Throughout, <laughs> yes, eh? Yes. Okay, let me ask this question. Um, yeah. Entrepreneurship. At this time, fine, you've been in church, you've been all these things. Have you doubled in it? Have you started selling? Uh, is that your pillow which has just uh, fallen? Yeah. Fallen. Do you have your pillow back? No, nah, I'm, I'm easy. I'm okay, good. So are yeah, you sure? Yeah, you can yeah. bring it. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah. in, 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 have you doubled in entrepreneurship? I don't I don't remember uh, doubling in any entrepreneurship. What I remember is, like I said, I was very active in all these extracurricular. Mm. So I remember being in drama club from Form 2. Was it Form 1? Form 2. Um, which also, I think, increased my network quite a bit. I remember going to Kisumu for drama fest with State House Girls, Huruma Girls, Pango and somebody else. Mm. And we were the only boys' school that went from Nairobi. We had a lot of fun in Kisumu then. Uh, later on, I became the drama chairman. Mm. I was quite active in the CU um, uh, because I remember I was treasurer once and then I think I headed the choir uh, at some point. Uh, so so uh, those are the things I was active in, okay. uh, in terms of the extracurricular activities that I felt mm -hmm. maybe started to build a sense of responsibility. Okay, uh, I But I, I don't ever remember 
doing something entrepreneurial related in high school and and are you thinking okay this is the direction that i want my life to go when i finish i want to be would you, is that beginning to yeah so, in your mind? so i think because i used to do well in school um a lot of people had the expectation that i would take one of these courses that lawyer doctor they are doctor particularly in fact i remember there is a lot of my parents friends who used to call me doctor Minamo mm. or or something they, they had already seen that i would end up taking one of these uh, uh, courses aligned to to doing well in school mm. um, and i did select medicine as my first choice oh but uh, thankfully i say thankfully <laughs> in hindsight i yeah. missed it by one point yeah and so maybe I was a bit cocky when I was choosing the courses because the second thing I chose was the computer science which was almost you know equally up there yeah uh, so I ended up being selected for computer science and, uh, and, and in where did you go to university where in Igaton university Igaton. yeah okay uh -huh. yeah yeah but but something then happened in uh, high school that was a bit of a pivotal moment in uh, form 3 this was in 96 um